it as well. Um, my name is Aaron Reitbauer, and together with my colleague, we will uh, yeah guide you through this through this uh, through this next half an hour, I would say. Um, and yeah, we are going to talk a little bit about the accessibility of, of digital learning. Um, just to give you a little overview, first up, I'll just uh, tell you a little bit more about the tempo, then about uh, the project we are currently working uh, in, which is called Antelis Plus. Uh, after that, uh, we will just discuss a little bit about what, what is accessibility and what does, does that mean. Um, then also some a little bit more uh, technical approach. So what's, what's a good tool to use maybe for your online sessions, um, how to check for accessible content will be part of the, of the talk as well. And then uh, at the end, some, some strategies maybe to how to implement uh, the, the, best, the best way to, to uh, teach your, your uh, contents. Um, but uh, before we start with the interesting stuff, <laughs> I'll start with a little uh, introduction about our tempo and what we do uh, here in Graz in Austria. Um, I'll give you just a little idea of our mission statement here, which is so a little met metaphor, I would say. Um, as you can see, and, and what, what drives us more or less is that the people all around the world are different. As you can see, all, all in here are very different and we all have our uh, personal needs and, and uh, our own ideas and thoughts. Um, but on the, on the other side, all of us, we want to be part of society. In this case, in, in our uh, picture here, society is this nice table and we all want to be part of this table and want to eat there and uh, yeah, enjoy the delicious lunch or dinner or whatever. And what we do at the Tempo and, and what's our job is to, to make those, uh, make it possible for people to access uh, society in this case, or in this case, the table. Um, so we create uh, ramps, we create steps, uh, we create yeah, holes even to uh, level out differences. Um, and that's what we do at the Tempo and what we try to do with, with different uh, approaches and ways. Um, just to give you a little overview of, of the Tempo group, um, that's our, as a, a tempo is the, is the group, big, the big group above, and then we have uh, several uh, sections of a tempo or departments uh, even. Um, and the department Lisa and I am working at is the department called Bildung, which is education in, in English. Um, and the main focus of, of our department is we, we help young, pe uh, young people with disabilities uh, who most of them come from school and they're not quite sure about uh, getting a job yet or they don't <clears throat> get the chance to, to find a job at the first uh, labor market. And what we do, we try to help them, assist them, teach them in some ways and, and uh, yeah, try to, to make them job, job ready and job fit more or less. That's, that's the biggest part of our tempo. And Lisa and I, we are a little smaller department of the department, more or less, uh, the, the digital education part, more or less. And uh, we, on the one side, we are uh, participating in different um, projects, European projects, um, but we also organize uh, courses uh, for European courses via the Erasmus uh, uh, course uh, project. Um, and uh, where we teach, mostly teachers, I would say, how to, to implement digital teach, teaching strategies and, and how to work with tablets and uh, computers and all those things and how to implement those and try to um, get the, 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 uh, the learning into the, the 21st century, I would say. <laughs> so that's, that's our department and that's, that's our, um, um, our po point of uh, tempo. Also, Das Lorenz is our restaurant at the tempo, which is also very important. Um, but I think for today, it's not that, that important. <laughs> um, the other departments of a tempo are Capito. Um, they are uh, focusing on, on accessibility uh, in total. But there, so the one, one part of Capito is focusing on accessible um, texts or easy to read, um, it's, it's the, the term for it. So they try to make texts and, and like contracts and all those different uh, uh, texts uh, as possible and as accessible as possible uh, without losing the content, of course. But they also um, provide physical uh, uh, accessibility, uh, and they are helping new buildings and, and uh, projects who are trying to make their homes or their uh, public uh, buildings as accessible as possible to um, yeah, get all people into the building and to, to have, uh, have them find their way around the, the buildings. Yeah, that's Capito, just in a, a quick. 
Then uh, Nueva is also a, a kind of old part already from, from a temple, which is about evaluation. Uh, the idea was to, to have people with disabilities be experts and be evaluators themselves. So they are trained to become evaluators. And then they go out to the, um, to the workplaces where people with disabilities work or, or even live. So those sheltered uh, living spaces. Um, and they talk and ask the people who live there and not just the, the CEOs or the, the trainers or the, the educators, but rather the, the people who live there and who are, who are the most important people there. And that, that's the approach of Nueva um, to really get the, the, the feedback from them. Um, so that's Nueva, and the last, uh, last but not least is Ava, which is the, the baby of a tempo, I would say. Um, and Ava is about uh, about assistance. So we connect uh, people with assistance need um, with people who provide assistance. So it's a it's a web platform. You can a little bit compare it to Tinder, more or less. <laughs> um, you, you give in your 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 needs, more or less, and and who you want to work with. And the, the person who provides the assistance also types in who they, what they can provide. Do they have like a driver's license or uh, I don't know, do they prefer to work with, with, with a female or a male or whatever? Um, so, and then they get matched and you can have this type of assistance you need and you, you will get the, the right person for your, your preference, uh, your personal situation. Yeah, so that's just a quick uh, overview of, of the Tempo Group. Um, we have a website and of course you can visit us there as well, but I think it's enough for now. <laughs> okay, but moving on, um, the, the project uh, we are part of, of right now is, is called Antilles Plus, um, which uh, focuses on accessibility as well and, and how to, let's say, bridge the digital divide um, between people with, without disabilities. Um, and as you can see on the on the on the on the picture, you we have like ten partners all from different countries all around Europe, and yeah, it's a quite interesting and quite uh, uh, motivated um, team, I would say. Uh, we started in January last year. Unfortunately, uh, Corona wasn't a big big topic back then, so we had to adapt over the last few months, of course, with our meetings and everything. But yeah, we, we figured it out pretty good. And what we are doing actually is, yes, yeah, there's, there's a picture, of course, again, to, to get the idea. Um, so you can see on the, the one picture, um, there's, there's this divide between people with disabilities or older people, and they can't reach or they can't be part of this digital world, more or less. And there's just this little, <laughs> this little bridge thingy there. And what we try with, with our project is we, we try to bridge this gap here and build a, a nice and stable uh, a bridge for them. And uh, what we did, just, just a quick overview, is we, the first, first step for us was to, to assess what is there already, um, what are difficulties for people with disabilities to, um, to get online or, or to, to be a, an active part of, of this digital world, um, and to see what courses are already there, how, which, which um, organizations provide which service already. And building from that, we our own uh, uh, partners, we created our own training manual. So it's uh, like a 100 page uh, big, uh, big um, uh, manual, which focuses on how to teach people who work with people with disabilities, but also people with disabilities themselves um, to, to navigate through this digital area. What, what is important uh, there, what technologies are already there, which you could use to, to improve the, the situation. Um, and also um, like um, the, the, the more, um, the, 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 the background from the EU, what is there and what has to be from, from their side already, what has to be implemented on, on the different websites as well, to have a little bit more, uh, theoretical approach as well, which is also kind of important. And then of course, we, 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 we exchanged best practices and, and we had had a look at what's good in Greece, what, what is already there in, in, in Ireland, for example. And that's also part of the training man manual. And we try to uh, provide trainings in the, in the next few weeks for interested people in, in our areas um, to get all those information across. And then the idea is to spread it from there so they can provide the trainings as well and so on. So we have, uh, we reach as many people as, as possible with, with this approach. That's our hope, at least. <laughs> 
And of course, we're also um, providing webinars. Um, we are participating in different events um, where we talk about the topic as well. We also have a social media campaign uh, with Right to Connect Now, um, hashtag Right to Connect Now, um, yeah, and, and so on. So we try to, to be as, as, as visible as, as possible. Yeah, so that's the end of this Plus project, just in a, in a, in a quick, quick uh, summary. Uh, but of course, if you have more questions about it, we can we can talk about it uh, later on, I would say. Yeah, but now I would uh, give the, the floor to Lisa. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah, why MTEL is plus? Uh, what does it mean to bridge the gap? I would like to explain this factual situation in more detail using an example from a presentation given by our CEO, Klaus Kandussi, in Innsbruck in 2017. Climbing high mountains in the Alps means danger to life and limb. Many people die in the Alps every year. Using the internet also means danger, perhaps not to life and limb, but mobbing and internet traps, for example, are massive dangers in internet. The reactions to these dangers are completely different. For example, residential assistants often estimate that using the internet is too dangerous for people with disabilities. They must be protected and kept away from danger. But there is no ban on entering the Alps for anyone who is not used to be to it by any Alpine clubs, for example. They rather offer climbing aids, safety measures and facilities as well as marked trails, training courses and guided tours. The correct answer here is support is needed. We will show you how it's done instead of the flat. That's too dangerous, you can't go there. Digital tools can be extremely helpful, especially for people with disabilities. They contribute to more comfort and self-determination in life and how to use them can be taught and learned. There is, you, you can give the ability to access, which means accessibility. Next slide, please. Thank you. I want to show you one of our NTLIS Plus success moments, as I call it. Uh, and in this case, I want to tell you about one of our colleagues who works in the self-advocacy. To lead his life largely self-determinate, he needs regular meetings with resident, residential assistants. They are essential for him. But during the first uh, lockdown in COVID crisis, there was a prohibition to meet other people. There were exit restrictions. Our colleague had to learn quickly how to use digital tools for communication independently to bridge the gap. So what was the solution to his problem? His digital skills. Meanwhile, he has also started to get new ways in professional context. He started uh, to give online lectures himself. Although the contact to the audience is missing, he perceives greatly improved networking opportunities through online conferencing. Next slide, please. Yeah, let's have a look on the different fields of media participation. So to take part in digital world, you need uh, some different uh, spots. Uh, participation, participate, Participation in digital media means, on the one hand, accessibility, the ability to access all the digital media, but it also means the possibility to be represented in different groups. We have the rep representation of different social groups. Diversity is a big keyword. And there is the possibility to participate through digital media, which means uh, working and learning and communicating through digital media. And all those three fields of media participation are needed to take part in digital work. But what does it mean, uh, the word accessibility? Accessibility, as the word is given, is the ability to access in the digital world. So the quality of being able to be reached 
or entered. The quality of being easy to obtain or use. The quality of being easily understood or appreciated. And the focus is on enabling access for people with disabilities or special needs and enabling access through the use of assistive technology, for example. And what, who, who is the target group for accessibility? The target group is all people are the target group. But with the special side on people who, uh, who can't see, with a special sight on usage without vision or usage with, with limited vision, usage without perception of color, for example, the usage without hearing or with limited hearing, usage without vocal capacity, usage with manipulation or strength and the minimized photosensitive seizure triggers and the usage with limited cognitive cognition. Okay, um, yeah. So and now for a little bit more a technical approach now, <laughs> uh, I will give you just a, a few examples of, of some video conferencing tools um, which you could use in your your uh, day to day training, for example, or your your teaching online. Um, and of course, uh, just just a heads up. Those those are just a few examples. There are many more out there, and in, maybe you have used different ones. But we just tried to 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 pick out the the uh, the the most uh, uh, well-known <laughs> and, and those you, you're most familiar with, uh, for example. But all of these, they have some sort of accessibility built in, which, which is already there, which you can use for, right from the spot and you don't have to, to change everything. Um, but not all people know about it. So it was kind of important for us to include it as well and, and talk a little bit about this. Um, and for example, let's start with Zoom. Um, of course, I think you all know Zoom, you're here in Zoom, of course. Um, but we could right now, if you wanted to, we could turn on live captions for this. Um, so there's the possibility in Zoom to turn this on. So uh, we would have uh, the, the live captioning uh, down under my, my screen right now. Um, the issue there, of course, is that's, that's the thing with, with those auto captions, of course, is it's automatically created and you have to, to speak very nice and, and understandable. Um, otherwise, it, it might be a little bit difficult sometimes. Um, but the other thing Zoom has built in is also the possibility for, for live captions. So um, they have built in some uh, 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 interface for, for external people to connect with Zoom so they can provide live, uh, live uh, captions from the outside more or less. So they will hear what we are saying right now and they could write down uh, the, the captions in, uh, in, the, in the meantime and then you have the live captions. That's also a possibility Zoom has built in. Of course, it's a little bit more uh, more forward uh, and, and a little bit more uh, uh, things to think, think about, um, but it, uh, the possibility is there, of course. Um, especially, there's a little bit of a difference uh, between the, the downloaded version, version you have on your desktop and the version in the web browser, of course. Um, but you have very, very many different accessibility settings on your desktop, like changing the font, the, the size of the font and all those things. Um, and yeah, as like I said, it's, it's a little bit different on the, on, the, on, the, on the browser. So I would always recommend using the, the desktop version if you try to use it as accessible as, as possible. Uh, and of course, the keyboard shortcuts are, are also there in, in Zoom where you can uh, change like uh, the mute button or uh, you turn on your camera and all those things. So you don't necessarily need the, the mouse as a pointing device. Um, the next uh, big tool I would say is Google Meet as well. Um, they also offer the, the automatic captioning in, in, in English, but they also have like a six more, more languages. Um, that's also something I, I will uh, uh, give you this information. Um, everything I'm saying now could be totally different tomorrow. So um, that's the nice thing about those tools. They, they, they get updated very regularly. And uh, today there might be six languages, but tomorrow there might, they had, might maybe there, there's already 15 languages uh, which they're supporting. So that's something you have to, to recheck sometime and, and try again. So Zoom this uh, today isn't the same like Zoom in, in one month. 
and the, the progress is, is very, very quick, especially during COVID, you, 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 there was a big spike in all those tools and suddenly all those, those tools, they, they try to improve and, and, and uh, build in features, um, which weren't there for, for many years. Um, so those events, they, they <laughs> drive forward those, those inventions and, and innovations as well. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the Google Meet, uh, they also have a built-in screen reader in the Chrome browser. You can zoom in, you have high contrast. Uh, and of course, they also have those, those uh, keyboard short, shortcuts as well. Um, Microsoft Teams is another one uh, which was very different uh, like one year ago uh, than it is today. They, they also integrated many new things. Um, the only issue if, if you, you have to have an uh, Office 360 license to create the, the, um, uh, a meeting, uh, I would say. But of course, you can invite people from, from the outside as well. The nice thing about Teams is, of course, it is kind of nice integrated with, with those uh, Word uh, and, and Excel and, and those Microsoft Office documents and, and uh, types of, of tools. Um, so that's, that's something which is a very good and positive uh, thing you, you could have. Um, and they also provide those automatic captioning in English and also they can, you can have those live captions as well. Um, go to meeting is, is a little smaller, I would say, but it's also kind of a kind of nice approach. And they were they were once of the of the first uh, video tools um, which offered a good support for sign language, um, which means you could rearrange the picture inside of your um, of your pre presentation pretty good to have the sign language on top of your screen all the time. Um, they don't have any avatars or something like that, so you have to have an, a sign interpreter, of course but you can insert in the, the person pretty good into the, the already their um, screen and, and you can have it on, on top. And of course, you can also very easily navigate it through, through um, go to, go to uh, meetings because they have a very nice and, and clean um, setup. Um, the same is for WebEx, of course. It's also a very nice tool, um, which is, they, they, their design is, I would say, the easiest from, from the bunch. <laughs> Um, and it's very, very good to, to use for, for people with low vision. Um, and also if you have some sort of screen magnifying going on, it's also very well in, in implemented. Um, and to use, but on the other side, WebEx sometimes they, they I'm not sure, of course, maybe it's, it's they change it some in, in the future, but for now they, they have some, some pretty uh, disturbing pop-ups, uh, which can pop up in the, in between the meeting sometime. Um, which can, of course, very, uh, can be very distracting for certain people and even mess up the, the control for the people. Um, yeah, but that's something maybe they will change in the future, which, which could be very useful. And the possibility for live captions and, and the automatic uh, transcription is also there as well. Okay, uh, so for now, I will give you just um, some, some key accessibility issues and, and things you could or you should keep in mind um, to, to have everything as accessible as possible. Um, the first thing, which is, uh, of course, those online meetings, and I think you're, you will learn them, that yourself, um, those, those online meetings can be kind of tiring as well, just uh, looking into the screen and there's not that much of interaction going on, unfortunately. So, and that's also very important for people with disability, especially with, for people with maybe a cognitive disability. Um, you, you have to have a very short and, and good uh, um, setting of, of your input. Um, so it's not too, too, uh, yeah, too difficult for them to follow. And pacing is a very important issue there. Um, so you should always recheck if everybody is, is on the same wave right now and if everyone can follow along. Um, you should, it's also very important at the beginning to set up some rules. So it's just only one person allowed talking at the same time and, and try to, to mute the other persons as well, which is kind of important. Um, one very important thing I would say is the recording of your meeting. Um, we are doing it right now, of course, but for other purposes, but for people with disabilities, it could be very useful. Maybe they, they can't follow along because they have something else to do or they just can't follow along because, yeah, I don't know, something unexpected happened. But if you have the recording, uh, they can just look it up afterwards as well. So recordings are a very, very important and, and nice, a nice tool to have. And all those tools, they have that built in already. So you don't have to 
um, to do it yourself. Um, breaks, <laughs> of course, is also very important. Um, so if you have a longer session, please be sure to have enough breaks in there to, to keep everyone awake and, and the attention span uh, it should not dip too low. And also keeping it simple is very important. So not just regarding the language, but also regarding using tools in, 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 in your presentation. So you shouldn't, of course, it's nice to have different tools like we use Mentimeter, but it's good that we use just Mentimeter for, for today, I would say, and not then we choose to change to like Answer Garden and then we change to Kahoot and then we change to there. It can be very, very difficult for people to follow along. So that's a, a very, very important uh, thing as well. I'm talking about audio, like I said already, it's very important that just one person is talking, mute the others, so learn how to manage that, and if somebody, maybe it's not, it's not uh, even if they're not doing it on, on purpose, but it can happen on accident that some, there's some background noise or every, anything like that, but you should be able to, to, to mute the person in this case, so you don't distract the others as well, um, and of course use the right tool like uh, I said before. Um, and your slides you're using right now, also uh, share them with your participants, maybe even in advance, so they can prepare a little bit uh, for, the, for the session. And again, that's important for everyone. It's not just for people with disabilities. So sharing your slides in advance is, is a, good, a good approach as well, so they can maybe have a little idea of what you're going to talk. <laughs> of course, we didn't do it <laughs> for this session, but you will get them afterwards, um, yeah. Um, talking about uh, the visual approach, um, that's also, uh, th there are two sides to this. So on the one side, use many, as many pictures as possible and be as, as easy to understand and don't use too much text on your slide. Um, but on the other side, if you have people with a visual uh, impairment in your audience, of course, pictures don't help them. Um, so try to, to explain what's going on on your slides um, and, and talk about those pictures so they can follow along as well. So, but you, you can have the, the nicest picture on your slide, but it doesn't help for a person who, who can't see the, the picture. So yeah, explain the picture and talk a little bit about it. Um, then of course, um, include like if you, so like, uh, like you did before, um, put the link uh, you're using to maybe if you're sharing your website to, to a tool or something like that, put it into the chat and everyone has access there and even repost it after a few minutes, for example. So it's, it's still there. Um, that's also kind of, kind of uh, important. Um, yeah. And just keep it simple. That's, that's, you, you see our slides, they are quite simple. It's just black and white for the most part. Of course, you can argue with it, 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 but it doesn't look that nice and of, yeah, all those things, but for the readability and for the understanding of the, for the uh, persons who are participating, it's, it's much easier to have it uh, plain and simple um, to follow along. Um, and one issue, of course, I will have to talk about is the, the online access. Of course, all those online settings, they, 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 you need an internet access for that. And that's something, of course, we can't um, um, help with. Um, the only thing you can, could do is maybe uh, try to, you have, you have this dial-in option for, for Zoom, for example, um, where you can join the audio, at least with, with a phone. Um, that could be a possibility, of course, um, to, to have those people uh, be part of the session as well. Um, and of course, the recording, maybe, there's some issue with the internet for the for the session and you can send out the recording afterwards so at least you have the, the, the person you, you give the information to the person as well and one last thing which is kind of important for those those uh, online sessions is assistance um, in this case meaning that wh when you're the host of a, of a meeting and you're giving a talk you should all, always have a second person in the best case to to be there and to assist your students for example or your your learners um, to, to help them if, in case uh, they, they need some, some help. Of course, that's not always possible, and I get that, especially in a, in a school setting. Um, but if possible, it's, it's definitely something I would, would uh, uh, recommend for, for every session. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Okay. So what are accessible digital formats? Once you have chosen the tool you want to use for your training, it is time to ensure that the digital materials you will be using during the training are accessible for all students. So what does this mean? 
uh, what about text in digital format? Uh, first point is the selection of fonts. Fonts designed for reading on a screen must be used uh, to make text accessible. Like um, uh, fonts like Verdana, Tahoma, or Trebuchet MS, they all the, they, they help uh, people to to read the text easier and always please allow to change the font in online texts. So if you use another font, there must be the possibility to change to one of these fonts. The appearance of the font is also very um, important because all information in text must be available without italic or bold design. So if you use uh, uh, italic or bold as your only method of conveying meaning, uh, it's not accessible to all students. Also colors for structuring the text can be uh, complicated and make the text less accessible. Ensure that all your information is conveyed, uh, is also available without color, only in black and white. Do not rely on color alone to highlight different content. Uh, next point is the color contrast. There must be the possibility to change to high contrast to work with black and white as we do it on the other um, slides we use, or even here. Uh, all information in text must be available without color effects. Take care of the structure of your text. Structure your text well. Uh, use content tables and headings. This will help it to be read out loud and navigated by screen readers or other assistive technology. And uh, use uh, image description. Use text to describe your images. But uh, how to ensure that digital formats work with the visually impaired or the blind, uh, especially Microsoft has uh, main uh, features included in his software to, uh, for people who are blind, color blind, or have low vision. So we can uh, have uh, a look on checking how to check that content is accessible uh, in a document with the accessibility checker built in in Microsoft Word. Would you show that? Yeah. Um, just checking, you don't see the, uh, the the Word file now, don't you? You just see the presentation. Yes, just yeah, the okay. presentation, yes. Yeah, okay. So I just have to reshare my screen. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I can't share my whole screen right now. Um, but you should see the, the Word document now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So it's just a document about uh, cyberbullying. And <laughs> so it's, it's just a, a longer paper. And how to check for, for the accessibility of this uh, document. Um, you just go to file up here. And then there's the, the info section down here. And pressing there, you have the, uh, the option for inspect your document. And there's the possibility to, to check accessibility. And if you press on this, uh, this button, then you have the, 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 uh, this column uh, at the side. And then uh, Word already gives you all those information about your document. So in here, you can see uh, the first, there are some errors and warnings and tips. Uh, and the errors, uh, those are the, the most, <laughs> um, uh, the, the baddest mistake you can make. Um, and for, for this one, it says a missing alternative text. So well, if you click on it, you even get the information why you should fix it and why it is important for people with disabilities as well. Uh, in this case, there is just no, um, for this picture, for example, there's no alternate text. So if uh, a person with a visual impairment is reading this document or the screen reader is, is reading the document, the person won't get any information about this, this uh, graph here because there is no text uh, behind. Um, of, there is this, this um, text down here in the description, which could work, of course, but for some sc screen readers, it's, it's way easier to have an alternate text uh, in the background already uh, to provide it. 
Uh, you can do that, by the way, by uh, at least on, on pictures, uh, by, with right clicking and then insert uh, alternative text. Uh, then there's the, the thing with it's not inline. Um, yeah, it may be difficult for screen re readers, users to interact with the object. So it, it gives you the information about it. Um, then you also have to check reading order, maybe. As you can see, this table is maybe a little bit confusing. And for certain screen readers, that's difficult to read aloud because it doesn't know where to start. So that's something to, to uh, check. Um, and there's one tip in this as well. Um, there are no headings in this document. So you don't have any, um, it, it doesn't have that nice of a structure, this document, unfortunately. So by no means, I don't want to bully this document here, not right now about cyberbullying, um, but it's just a, a nice document to, to, to give an idea about the, those, those settings and how to, to figure that out. And like I said, it's already built in, in, in those Microsoft Office tools. The same goes for uh, PowerPoint and the same goes for Excel. It's uh, always the same. And you could also do the same uh, in, in PDF files. Um, but for that, you have to have the, the uh, Acrobat Pro version. So you have to pay for the version to have those ac accessibility checks. Um, but the possibility is there as well. Yeah. OK, and let's go back to the presentation. Do, 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 do. There it is. Yeah, and what about online teaching strategies? As in face-to-face -face teaching environments, it's also important to take into account accessibility when providing training online. Always address participants with their name to ensure that they know who is being spoken to. Uh, when giving a virtual presentation, always read out loud what is written in your presentation so that participants can follow along. As in face-to-face -face environments, the self-motivation of the learners is the key. Teaching strategies should focus on providing opportunities and challenges that attract the learner's personal interest in order to create the right conditions for participation and adaptability according to the people's needs and wishes. And take care in preparation of choosing the right font, should be designed for reading on screens, should be possible to change in online texts, and take fonts that are created for screen readers and reading on screens like Vadana, Tahoma, or Trebuchet MS. Take care of the appearance of the font. All the information in text must be available without italic, without bold, and there must be the possibility to change the point size in online text. Color contrasts must be, there must be the, the, the possibility to change color contrasts into black and white if you have visually impaired persons who uh, need the higher contrast. And all information in the text must be available without color effects. Take care of structuring your text well. Uh, left align instead of using block text is better because then you have a good outline for screen readers. Use bullets, use numbers in your text. And don't forget to have an alternate text and image descriptions to your images. So some, that were some, some short abbreviated points on online teaching strategies and accessibility in digital learning. Now it's space for questions, ideas, discussion, et cetera. About accessible communications, because when you are um, when you are promoting an event or a webinar, uh, before you can organize it, is of course it's important that everyone will get the information about it uh, in a way that is also accessible. And these are some practices we also try to follow at EAEA. So um, 
one important tip is that when you put the uh, event program, uh, always put it as a regular website text rather than a PDF. I know that it's really common to use PDFs for everything, but PDFs are generally not very accessible for like blind people, for instance, and also for other people, uh, I personally don't really like them so much. So if you have a possibility to put a uh, program on the website, please do that. Uh, and if you are using a PDF program, then it's good to also publish it in RTF format, which is a type of uh, Word document, because those are um, more accessible than PDF. So you can have the same program as PDF and RTF. There's also, I believe, some, some tips how to make the RTF more accessible, but I will not go into detail now about that. And then include contact details in the event description so that uh, people, if they have any questions, they are able to, to contact the organizer or maybe even ask about uh, whether it's possible to participate if you need an interpreter or something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, it's obvious that you should use a clear language about the event, describe what it is, when it is, who it is for, what you will learn, by when you have to sign up. Those are kind of self-evident. And then one, one good tip is use descriptive link text. This applies to websites and newsletters and everything. So don't write this link text like read more, click here, but rather put the link into the um, into the informative uh, words, like for instance, webinar on accessibility, and that's the link. Not like read more about webinar and accessibility, and then you put the link into the read more uh, part. Because the blind people um, they use screen readers that are listing the links uh, on the page, and then if they ask the reader to list the links, it will just say read more, click here, read more click here. So they will not realize what is that they're supposed to click to find more information. This is a very common thing. Um, and then uh, registration, ensure that the online form you're using is accessible. If that's, for instance, by googling, finding out about it. Um, I didn't have too much time to investigate what form actually would be accessible. But if you are not certain about it, offer an alternative method of registration. For instance, you can say that uh, you can also register by sending an email to this and this person. So that's at least a good option. And offer a possibility to notify of special needs. Uh, so if, for instance, in the registration form, you can have a field like, do you have any other things you would like to tell us? Or do you have any special needs? Something like that. So then people have a place where they can write it because often in, you see registration forms where there's no there's no place where you could and this also applies to like live events where it's also particularly important and then um, social media promotion so never publish the webinar content as an image only this is quite common practice that you see like banners where there's like information about the, the time and the place and the name of the speaker and some of those information is not included in the text part of the social media post. So if you have a, a banner like here, it's important to always put the, the same kind of key information about the webinar into the text. Or you can use alt text, this alternative text, which also exists in Facebook and Twitter, and I believe also in Instagram, although I haven't used it there yet, but, um, yeah, so it's possible to put uh, like alternative text behind the picture so that people with using screen readers can also find it. And this is also particularly important for like uh, infographics or testimonials because you might not want to repeat text of the infographic in the post because it might look a bit silly for the other people who can who can read it in the infographic or some testimonial like someone saying like a quote about uh, uh, a person saying a quote about something they participated in. So that is also good to put into the alternative text. And then it's always good practice to link to a web page for more information and not directly to a PDF. So first a web page, and if you have PDFs there, then the PDFs will be uploaded on the, on the web page. 
So these are just a few practical tips I wanted to give you um, in addition to the previous presentation. Okay, I will stop. My... And you will also get all these um, materials afterwards.